Ian? Well, I will stand and I will use a microphone. Um, Peter, if uh, you were a car, it would be an Austin Allegro uh, stuck in the 1970s. If you were a computer, it would no doubt be a BBC basic one. And you used to be in favour of guillotining the Queen in your socialist worker days. At least the Conservative Party believes in tradition. It, it, it sticks to its beliefs, unlike someone who's travelled from the far left to, well, God knows where on the uh, political spectrum. Uh, yes, the Conservative Party does want to get into power, because unless you are in power, you can't do anything, you can't change anything. And most people, and I say most, do go into politics because they want to effect change. Most people have probably only one thing that they, they have a real bee in their bonnet about, that if at the end of their political careers they've done something to change, they will feel a certain sen sense of satisfaction. It may not be a big idea. And I agree with Ed that I'm very suspicious of any politician who comes to me and says, I have a big idea, this is what will save the country. Because generally, politicians over-promise and under-deliver. And what I'd like to see David Cameron do is under-promise and over-deliver. Because, frankly, the last three years, David Cameron has spent telling us all the wonderful things that he would like to do. Um, we had all this stuff about general well-being. We had that ridiculous phrase, sharing the proceeds of growth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me let you into a secret. There won't be any growth to share over the next few years. And we, it is sort of slightly retro now. It's not just back to the 70s. It's back to the 90s when Bill Clinton said it's the economy, stupid. That's the only thing that is going to dominate British politics over the next few years. And whichever politician, whichever political party actually has a coherent sense of where they want to go in economic policy and, and can actually sell that to the electorate, um, that's the political party that I think is going to succeed. I think there are three things, three ideas that the Conservative, a future Conservative government needs to latch on to. The first is honesty. Because I have never been a, a, present in, a political, in the political cycle where people just hate politicians as much as they do today. Because if, you say, if I said to some of you today, what do you think of politicians as a species? You'd say they're lying, thieving bastards. <laughs> Whereas if you say, what, but what do you think of your own MP? You might say, well, actually, it's quite good. It's done something to help my neighbour, done something to help me. Um, so if you reduce it down to the individual, people have a very different idea. But it's very worrying when I can do phone-ins on Five Live or one I did on Radio Wales this week where every single caller, you, I mean, you could just can't have a rational debate with them because they are so angry at the way they see politicians behaving. So I think honesty is the best policy, not just over um, how you conduct yourself in public, but also where we sit economically. And it's no good politicians saying to us, oh, yes, we can borrow all this money, and don't worry, we can pay it back in the end through, through some means. It's a dishonest way of approaching politics. The second, which Ed touched on, is localism, devolving power back to the, 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 the most local base possible. And politicians have a natural instinct to centralise things. That's got to stop. And there's got to be a degree of trust between central government politicians and local politicians. We've got to get much higher quality people into local politics if they're going to take that power back. Thirdly, the Conservatives have got to get a grip on the machine of government because it's the civil service who will implement things. We've heard in recent weeks that all of these little initiatives that the government announced in the autumn haven't been implemented. Not a single small business has been helped by Gordon Brown's scheme. Not a single person has been helped with their mortgage through Gordon Brown's scheme. Why? Because the government department's concern haven't implemented them. Now, if that happens, in the first few months of a Conservative government, we can, we can look forward to very little change at all. I interviewed Ken Livingstone recently, who described the civil service as a malign influence on British national life, because they are constantly for the status quo. And that's going to be a real challenge for David Cameron to get to grips with in his first term. Tony Blair never did. Tony Blair's first term was a failure in terms of public sector reform, because the civil service was too slow in carrying out the instructions. So, as I said at the beginning, I'm suspicious of big ideas, but um, I think the electorate want a bit of honesty in politics, and that's what I hope they're going to get. Okay, Ian, thank you very much indeed.